Big Brother Canada 4 has come to a close, which means it's time for another edition of the Reality TV We're Happy Hour. What's going on, everybody? My name's Jordan Parhar, and I'm here with you once again on RobIsWebsite.com to break down the latest happenings on BB Can 4. And with me today is somebody who has yet to make an appearance on the Reality TV We're Happy Hour, someone who I've, I tried to get on last summer. We just couldn't really <laughs> figure it out. I mean, she's four and a half hours ahead of me. I, I, I find that weird. Why we live in the same country, yet we have one person who, you know, for me, it's 515 Pacific time. But for you, it's like, it's almost 10, Allison. Yeah, it's quarter to 10 here. It's quarter to 10. It, it, I'm in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and cool. you heard her voice already. Uh, she is somebody who is a very well liked on Big Brother Canada, too. Uh, a fan favorite, somebody who I have a lot of respect for, a fellow super fan of the game. She was the secret house guest that season. I guess could we, could we, could we could call her a wild card, I guess. It's yeah. Allison White, ladies and gentlemen. Allison, how are you doing this evening? I'm really well. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> So happy to have you. I'm so so excited. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Been waiting to talk some BB Can 4 with you, Allison. I've had a lot of people tweet me and say, get Allison on the show. Let's get Allison. So uh, you guys asked, and uh, here we are. Allison is here for you today, and this should be a very, very fun show. Really good episode, and I'm excited to get into it. Uh, and last but not least, of course, uh, with me as always to break down the live feeds, get into all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I'm the beauty and uh, he is the brains. It's the great Taryn Armstrong, ladies and gentlemen. Or maybe it's the other way around. Really, maybe maybe I, you're just both Taryn. I think you're the you're the beauty and the brains, and I'm just you know I, I'm just along for the ride. Taryn, how are you this evening? I don't know. I mean, that was very flattering, but I'm just I'm just not vibing this man. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, we lost Taryn. Oh no, he said. Oh, but I can see his 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 sweater. So uh, he, he's yeah. still here, thankfully. <laughs> Not pulling a Joel on us. Did, did Rob put you up to that? Was that was that your task? Uh, do you win a, a reward for us for uh, when we go to live know it alls next month, Taryn? Yeah, totally. You know, I I thought briefly before I did this that it would be way funnier if I came on a podcast I actually wasn't going to be on and did that and then just like leg legitimately left and somebody else came <laughs> and replaced me. Um, but it, my I had the idea too late. <laughs> That would have been good. That would have been really good. Or you could have told Brent to come and then Brent <laughs> right, could yeah. showed up and then Brent could have done that and you could have swapped in. Uh, that, that would have worked out well. All right. Just to set things up for you guys, uh, we had some technical issues at the top of this. So we are live on Blab today, not on a Google Hangout. So uh, the questions will be a little bit different today. If you want to, we have a chat on the right hand side of your screen. So if you want to leave a question for us, type in slash Q and then type in your question. We'll get into those later on in the show. And we're going to start off by talking about the episode episode tonight and then we'll get into the live feeds later on so if you don't want, want to know who won the veto and that kind of stuff we won't spoil it for you uh so don't worry we, we, we've got you covered either way whether you're just watching the show watching the feeds watching all of it uh should be a very fun episode to talk about i'm super stoked and let's jump into a top story of tonight uh, live in La Vida Loca, maybe not anymore after those nominations. Uh, La Vida uh, is, is the HOH, and she nominates Christine and Cassandra for eviction this week. Uh, and really, the editing was a little strange with this because we kind of saw, I mean, there was a lot to jam into that episode. We had to get the, you know, Joel's date, which was great. And we'll get into that in a little bit and all sorts of game talk. But we didn't really get to see why, other than Cassandra's comment, why LaVita wanted to put those two on the block. Allison, what was your take on that decision by LaVita to put those guys up? Um, I was actually watching feeds that entire day, so it was very much a flip floppy thing. Um, I am really upset that she decided to go that way. I really thought that she was gonna just, you know, go for the power couple, like stick to her guns, like that's what she wanted to do, and like take a big move. And here she's saying, Oh, it's too early, it's week three. Honey, you almost went homeless last week. Do it. Like, don't wait around for, you know, week four four or five when you won't have power, you might not even be there. So it's like, like I don't understand it. Like I was talking to Netta actually uh, last night and she compared it to Ica's HOH when she could have put up Kenny and Andrew, but decided to put up myself. Was it myself? No, it was uh, Heather and Heather, Paul or something. Well, wasn't yeah. it? Didn't didn't someone win the? Weren't you? Uh, didn't you were on the block initially? I think, and then you well, got the, the veto. Took week. yourself off. Uh, that was, was 
That was, that was also week? yeah. That was Rochelle's HOH. So she oh, put okay. up me okay. and Heather, okay. and then but but she backdoored Ica. Uh, right, I don't know. Right. So I just feel like I like Nikki said on on the feeds. She told Levita, if you put up Cassandra and Christine, it's a waste. And Nikki was right. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Well, it was just it was just really interesting because for me, oh, and I had as soon as Levita won HOH. I was stoked. I was super excited because I thought, all right, this is great. You know, you know, going from the top, very rare you see, you know, uh, you know, a Paul Jackson like HOH go from first HOH to <laughs> on the block and essentially out the door back to HOH that quickly. Uh, which because I and I thought, okay, she's just gonna probably go Kelsey and Jared. But in my head, people were asking, what what would I do? And I think I would try to gain goodwill with with the Jared and Kelsey side and maybe just take a shot at people who no one cares about like mm -hmm. Christine. However, in this situation, it seems as if she kind of was a little all, all over the place talking to people saying, to, you know, we saw that conversation with Ramsey and she's like getting short with people and making all these deals. And then she still nominates the, you know, the third wheels ally in Cassandra. So she makes them mad. So it's sort of like, yeah, like you were saying with the whole Ica thing, just kind of like doing this little jig in the middle here and not really knowing what to do and now it's it's not really looking so great taryn can you describe the day of that day after levita won the hoh and what she was doing uh in turn was she making it's because from what i've heard it sounds like she was just making deals with everyone that day yeah i mean as soon as she won i was like why did she do this you know like she should have been trying to throw that as much as possible because she spent all week last week making good, decent relationships with people. They were under the assumption that we've got Levita now. We feel close to her. We're going to use her. And she then <laughs> won the HOH. And now she has to turn on one of those sides. And that we saw her have a lot of trouble with it as soon as she won the HOH. She was talking to everyone and every single person was like, oh, yeah, we're good with you, Levita. We want to work with you. And she was like, what do I do? They all want to work with me. Um, it was just, it was a lot of, I got to do this. I got to do this. Different people telling her different things. Uh, you know, close her closest allies telling her to go after uh, Kelsey and Raul. Um, but her thinking, well, if they want me to go after them, does, is that good for me or is it good for them? And it it, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, really, really, really interesting. Uh, and we saw on the show too today, I mean, she goes to... And this is why now I can see why people had I mean, we saw that scene from Nikki earlier in the episode today. And she said, I don't get why does everyone hate Levita? I don't know why. And, and now <laughs> we can see because of that first HOH, we didn't really see the feeds, but we saw tonight again. Levita has not learned from her mistakes. She says to she summons Jared to her HOH room and says, oh, okay, Jared, we're going to do this. And this is the deal, whatever. Okay. You take that. Yes or no. All right. You're going to take it. Okay. Now go get, go get Raul and Kelsey and bring them, bring them to my office. It's like, you're not the principal Levita. That's not a strict. Nobody likes the principal. You don't want to do that and have call people and summon them to your office. It's just not a good idea. She's doing that. They're mad about the whole situation. It's just, it's just not fun. Allison, I mean, you on your season, there were a lot of people who were kind of power hungry like that a little bit. You, you, you know what that's like firsthand, right? I guess so. I, but I don't know. <laughs> it's two years ago. I don't even remember where I don't remember any of it. Um, <laughs> God, who was power hungry? I mean, I was like the first week or so I was, I didn't even know where I was to. And, you know, I was busy like dealing with all the girls hating me. And then after that, I was on the block and thought, well, I was going home anyway. And then, well, I got caught up with Andrew and that was stupid. And then, so I, I don't know, who was power hungry? I don't know. Well, like, I'm just trying no, to think like, he just kept yeah, winning. No. And then well, I I'm went. Just trying to th I'm trying to think here, like, uh, you know, someone like Sabrina, although she was never HOH, but just kind of like bossing you around. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, like, that's just not when you're in the game and you're playing, you never like to be t nobody. I mean, that's just the thing in life, right? Like nobody likes being told to do like Taryn. When I, when I told you, Hey, Taryn, you have to come on the Sunday recap with me tonight. Uh, you probably like, unless I like give you incentive to come on with me by bringing Allison here to talk with us. As well, yeah, well, that was the deal we made. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, you would have been like, well, no, like I, I, why, why would I do that? Like, that's just, so I, it's just interesting to see 
uh, this whole thing <laughs> break down with Levita. But it's super entertaining because uh, that's something that I really liked this season is they've gone away from the big super fans and they've gone with a lot of people who have a little bit of knowledge of the show but really have no idea what they're doing. Allison, what do you think about that approach to the casting this season? I mean, I, it's been really entertaining so far. Like, I really love this season so far. But it is... As a fan of the show and the game, it's hard to watch these people, like especially on the feeds, ask stupid questions or like not know who someone is. Or, you know, it's just like when Dallas, I can say this because it was before, when Dallas was trying to say that if the veto uh, holder used the veto, they can still go up and like things like that. I was just like, you're in the house. You need to like, are you, was he doing that purposely? I don't know, but he was pissing me off. So I, it was just, I don't know. I can't well, do that's it. This whole Levita is supposed to be a super fan. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? I, was gonna say that. I mean, Levita's... I am wearing. I'm wearing my 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 brought my panda hat back, and I'm wearing a Levita style hairdo in her honor because she's so wacky. <laughs> but girl, you ain't no super fan. I mean, I'm very. I'm not a super fan either. People call me one. I don't think I am one. But I'm more super fan than she is. Clearly. Well, you had a shield shirt going into your season, so I feel like that kind of qualifies you as a super fan. But yeah, Levita, I mean, Taryn, I, I saw on Twitter, and I didn't actually witness this myself, but somebody was, uh, I saw that like Levita was having a conversation with Kelsey about how much they had watched the show. And apparently Levita said like she has a friend who is really into it. And Kelsey th found that to be like really strange. Is, am I off the mark on that? No, you're not. Um, they were they were talking about like it's weird that some people are just like crazy into it and they like watch the feed. Le Levita said she tried watching the feeds once and they were super boring, so she just right. couldn't get into it. Um, so that's that's her being a super fan. Um, and she has been calling herself a super fan. The thing is though, I I think that I don't I don't think it's the lack of of fans in the house that's making it uh, so exciting so far. I think all of the the favorite players in the house they're all fans of the show all of the people that are kind of playing the more boring games are the recruits they're doing stupid things which can add some spice but this week has been the most exciting week at least for me and that's because uh levita has been thinking in really strange terms and there's a lot of the people in the middle who um who are fans of the show and know what they're doing there's a lot of back and forth and there's a lot of very, like subtle things that are going on that makes it really exciting and flipping back and forth and last week was kind of straightforward because it was a revenge nomination and that's what recruits do you know so um i'm not sure i buy the the recruit is a good strategy thing i think you at the very least want a healthy mix so that's where i stand yeah, I think that's that's the key is you need a, a good mix of both. You don't want to have you need to have, you know, the right number of Levitas and you have to have the right number of your your Mitches in the house. It's got to be that good balance, because if it's like last season where it was just all super fans and way too many. I mean, the gameplay was really good at certain aspects, but I feel like, you know, a lot of the, the drama was all manufactured from the twists and not to necessarily. Be fair, there wasn't really a chance for the drama to manufacture itself. <laughs> with how many twists there were uh well I'll, 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 you said it not me taryn uh <laughs> allison quick question for you uh bigger super fan of big brother levita or sabrina abate who famously called uh, uh brendan of brendan and rachel when rachel was on the sideshow uh hey rachel uh, how is brandon doing <laughs> how is brandon <laughs> doing oh god oh oh that's a hard question i would well Oh, Christ. Oh shit. Am I allowed to am I allowed to swear? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I said it. I said it again. <laughs> yeah. I I'm gonna go with Levita, maybe. Maybe she's hiding her knowledge. I don't know. But I think uh, Levita knows more. She just has a very different idea of how to play the game. When like when, when Sabrina argues with you that Evil Dick wasn't in season eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> Did she? I missed that. She argued yeah. that Dick was not on season eight. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I wish she was on our season. It would have been so funny. Oh, my gosh. Sabrina. Wouldn't Sabrina is the best. She, she, is, she really is a mastermind. Uh, that, that, that's Sabrina. Uh, okay. Let, let's talk a little bit more. Uh, and I actually, one thing I wanted to... Uh, to bring up Taryn is uh, and you know what I completely forgot what it was so I'm just going to pretend like we didn't even get into that so we're going to move on <laughs> <laughs> 
it was such a smooth dismount. Like he went straight I, in, well, I knew straight it, back out. Straight back in, straight back out. You know, I, I uh, it's something I, I've I've learned. It's the art of uh, uh, I don't know what uh, I don't know what it is. It just has to do with so many of these live shows. I've just figured it out. But we'll just edit that out of the audio, and uh, no one will will even know. Uh, and, just for you live and, watchers. Just for you live watchers, you'll see that. Oh, okay. Uh, but okay, let's talk about uh, Jared Kelsey Raul. I want to know what it was like. Uh, you know, because we saw on the show, it seemed like Kelsey was really offended by this whole situation. Uh, Taryn, was Kelsey going around the house on the feeds complaining about this whole deal that Levita was offering her? Because it seemed like she was like super bitter about this whole situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, she had already been complaining prior to the deal being tried to be struck um, with her. Uh, she heard from Nikki that Levita had been saying that um she can't trust kelsey or whatever so kelsey was already upset at levita at that point from the information she got she got from nikki and then she went up there and she hates that she has to pretend to be her friend and she just can't stand it so she's constantly complaining to jared and raul about levita um and that i, I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon well <laughs> They're very interesting. I mean, for for Levita, she's she's trying her best, Allison. She really is. But I don't know. Does she have after this? I mean, and, and we won't talk about the veto yet. But just based off of these nominations, uh, how many weeks do you think beyond this one? Do you think Levita can last in this game? Oh, it's so hard and impossible to tell, Jordan. Um, well, that's why I asked you because you're so wise, Allison. I'm so wise. So <laughs> wise. Um, oh, geez. If, okay, say, uh, geez, okay. If it stays the way it is with the current nominees, I don't think she's going to last much longer. However, if somebody wins the veto and uses it, say her or someone else, and she ends up backdooring someone or, you know, you know, putting someone else up. And I feel like that could change her game significantly. Okay. And maybe she'll have a longer shelf life. I, I don't know. But that's okay. just my original wisdom thought. <laughs> original wisdom thought from yeah. Allison White. There you go. Uh, okay. Let, let's just talk a little bit more about uh, the episode here in general, guys. Uh, what do you think about the statement, Taryn, that... Kelsey made to Jared saying like, oh yeah, it was, it was all, if we, we would have listened to me, it would have been my, it was my idea. We want, we were going to get rid of Levita. That's what we should have done. We never should have got rid of Shari. Uh, is that, is that an accurate statement? Was, uh, was Kelsey the only one saying to, to get rid of Levita? About uh, pretty much everyone said they wanted to get rid of Levita and they wanted to get rid of Shari because uh, at least everyone in, in third wheel, they went back and forth so often. I mean, they we heard a brief, brief mention of it in the the opening montage where they were like, I just keep going back and forth within each day. And it's like that's that's really how it was. Um, she really was dead set on taking out Levita for a while. But Cassandra and Mitch kind of changed her mind. Uh, Jared flip flopped back a, a few times and uh, it was a mess. Uh, Allison, what do you think of the statement that Kelsey made saying, uh, she's, she's the brains of the operation, uh, and Jared is just the, the beauty. Uh, what, what do you think of that statement there? I watched that live and I almost like, it was an instant face or palm, face palm. Is that what it is? I don't know what it is. Yes. I hit myself face in palm. the head. It was, <laughs> it was, oh man, I just hate how cocky she was in that moment. And it, that was what she was actually talking about there is like, she wanted to convince everybody else um in to vote out shari but then convince lovita's closest people to uh vote to what well, yeah to vote to evict her so that when lovita stayed she would have no one that was her plan and she thought yes. it was amazing her but master jared, plan yeah. jared wanted lovita out essentially jared put up lovita because of kelsey like what is she anyway it's just I just find she's just trying to, you know, seem like this mastermind and, oh, uh, you should have listened to me when she clearly has no insight into what she's been saying or, you know, what she should be doing. I just can't. I can't anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of us are feeling the same way. I mean, it's funny going into this season. I remember seeing the, the cast and I thought, OK, Kelsey is Ashley and Jared is Zach. But, you know, just seeing how Kelsey's, how Kelsey's behaving in the house. I mean, 
she's completely she couldn't be further from Ashley Wood. I mean, she's so much more different, at least with how she's been behaving so far. Uh, just just seems like she has doesn't really have a grasp on what's going on, how people really are perceiving her. And it's just she has this arrogance about her that is just really turning my it's turning me off of her and it's turning i think a lot of people off of her um and i i really i hope that's not what she's like in real life i mean i'll give her the benefit of the doubt but i don't know i don't know taryn is that is that really what kelsey's like i i, I don't know i mean i think that she i think that she's still riding the 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 power high from last uh from last week and I think that the second she gets humbled, she'll turn into a more tolerable character like most other people that play the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's necessarily what she's like in real life, but uh, certainly not uh, the most endearing character at the moment. Jordan, well, question for you. Yes. Quickly. Did you always wish that people were different on the outside or was it only after you played the game and you knew that you were going to meet us? <laughs> because I'm sure when you watch season two, you're like, oh, that bitch. You know, oh, but now you're like, oh, I really hope that they're nice on the outside because I know they're going to be part of my family and I want well, to love yeah. them. It's straight, straight up because before, yeah. before oh I didn't God. care because I was yeah. like, I'm never going to meet these people. But now <laughs> I'm going to have to meet Kelsey and hang out with her. And, you know, she's probably going to come back to this video and be like, you called me arrogant. I hate you. And I'm going to be like, yeah, you're right. But, you know, I, I, I tried. I tried. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 true though, and it's really it is interesting because I think a lot of people watch this show and they see people on the feeds and in the game and on in the DR and they 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 judge people. I mean, that's human nature. You're going to judge certain people. I do it. We all do it. It happens. But mm -hmm. when you get into the real world, uh, you, people are a lot of times are different. Now, not all the time. A lot of the times, people are insane still, and it's very it's it's quite entertaining and funny uh and, and actually getting to meet everyone i was like okay all right like this is actually how a lot of these people are but a lot of times i went in with certain perceptions of of individuals and i, I left afterwards realizing you know what that person's actually you know that person's actually pretty cool so it, it happens the you know what it's like allison that house oh, makes you totally. go insane. If yeah. I had only seen that one, you know, infamous YouTube clip of you, I, I would be like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I don't know, this, this person's a little nuts, but I've hung out with you. And I'm like, oh, Allison's actually really cool. Like, actually, <laughs> like, you can't get stuff taken off YouTube ever. <laughs> no, like trust me. I've, Allison, I've tried. Uh, there are. So have I. I think there, I think there's close to a million views of myself and another individual from my season uh, in a bed, like making out and stuff. And it just, uh, I don't want that on, on YouTube anymore, but where is it? <laughs> it's, it's there. It's there. If you want to see it, uh, just go type in Jordan, big brother, Canada three on YouTube. And then after like five blindside videos, that's Aww. what come up. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fun <laughs> stuff. Okay. We're talking, we were talking about somebody who's not super endearing, as of right now, but let's talk about somebody who is really oh, endearing. Joel. Yes, Joel. Yeah. How can you not love Joel, right? I mean, <laughs> this guy is. I am. I'm. I love Joel. Like when I grow up, I want to be just like Joel. I mean, he is just like the nicest guy. So funny and caring and kind. And then there was that. He, there was a big thing on the feeds today with him as well, which we'll get into in the live feed portion because I imagine that will probably make the edited television show. Um, mm -hmm. But just to. Just an, an, an unbelievable guy, uh, but interesting that he gets this task. I mean, I guess it's not because, I mean, if you're going to think of somebody to go on a date in the house, Joel is probably the first person you would want to see do that. Right, Allison? Yes, absolutely. I love him. What a muffin. Oh. How how has he never been on a date in his life, though? I mean, he talked about how he's like very single. And I mean, very single. He's mentioned that several times, but uh, never been on a date like poor guy right yeah i mean but i can i he, he is that kind of immediately friend zoned guy like he's so cute and you just <laughs> want to be his friend and hug him and stuff like i don't know that's probably what happened but even he, but but even i had been on a date before big brother canada he, and, he did and, you say, know right he did Have say you seen to your bots jordan <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> Oh, the apple. Okay, sorry. Go, Taryn. Taryn, go. Fair statement. Fair he, statement. He did say to Cassandra that he has been on a date with somebody. Like, he's been set up. He's gone out with somebody before. He's just never been, like, with a girlfriend on a date. 
And so that's okay. the kind of difference. He's so, never so had he's an never, actual girlfriend. Okay. So he's never like asked a girl on a date. It's just been like, you know, Joel's buddy from work is like, hey, Joel, you know, you should – you should go on a date with Sally from uh, from accounting. I think she would, you and her would get along real great. And then they go for coffee, and then I don't know right. if it goes if it goes how that date went. Probably didn't really. Well, I, we do know <laughs> Joel says he hasn't had too much success. So sorry for Joel. Probably didn't go so well. But I've got a feeling after the show, I think Joel is going to do just fine for himself. Uh, right, Allison? Would you go on a date with Joel? A friend date. I'd go on a friend date with Joel. <laughs> okay, well, I, that's, that counts. That's something. <laughs> he's already he's there. not my type. But you know what? I won't say that. I'm going to say if I get to know him outside of the house, I would consider going on a date with him. Yes. All right. I take that all, I take that all back. You know, I don't know the guy. He's probably, like, he's so endearing and lovely. I would go on a date with him. Yes, sure. <laughs> all right, I'd there we go. I'd love to get to know him better. Uh, uh, and also breaking news in the live chat. We I, I haven't fact checked this, so I don't know if it's legit. But according to at Teenage Tyson, uh, the video I was referring to my uh, to of myself from Big Brother Canada three has two million seventy three thousand three hundred and seventy five views. So, uh, yeah, there you, you could go. be on the you could be on the season of the Amazing Race with that kind of viewership. <laughs> Jordan, can I ask? Them the tweet the link to me so i can <laughs> yes uh, at teenage tyson if you want to tweet uh at ali dub and send her the link so she can watch it uh yes. Let's then make it there, you, there you go uh <laughs> maybe i'll see maybe i'll see if scott st pierre can put put it in the show notes so you guys can well, no I, I won't do that i don't want you guys to, i don't want more publicity to that video that's okay uh, i understand yes okay uh this this task though from joel i mean the thing the one thing that it really taught me, I think, is not that like I really love Joel because I already knew that I really love Joel, but I really, really like Cassandra for how she handled that whole situation. Uh, she was super kind to Joel, like super nice and was like, hey, like trying to help him out and like all this kind of stuff. Taryn, is, do they, is, does Cassandra like this with a lot of people in the house or just Joel? Um, So I, I think she... I, I think she comes off a bit strong to some people, especially people like Levita, where last week she was very, very kind to Levita. She was like there for her when she was down. But it was it just came across like I'm putting you in my back pocket right now. And Levita saw through it. And then the, the comment, obviously, especially just really put it over the edge. Um, and she makes those kinds of comments kind of often and she she blames it on the other person for not getting her sense of humor which i don't think is is a good thing to do um that said she does get along with a lot of people it's just she doesn't have a lot of like really close relationships she's she kind of just has that sense of like it just might be a little bit fake Okay, so it's kind of like, you know, Donald Trump's knowledge on everything. He knows lots about everything, just like a little bit to like explain it, but just he can't like if you go deep into it, he's screwed. That's what you're saying? Uh sure. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. Politics what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry for bringing politics onto this podcast. We'll, we'll the nonsense will continue from here on out. Uh, Allison, if somebody said uh, to you after winning HOH, uh, "Yeah, oh, I can't believe that dumb bitch won," would you nominate them as well? Um, not just on that, but <laughs> but like you would get offended, right? Because like Absolutely. the because Cassandra oh. seemed like that was the one thing that like where, where I was like, OK, I saw the, the the thing with Joel and I thought, OK, this is great. I love Cassandra. But then when I saw that and she was like, oh, it was just a joke. <laughs> and it's like, well, like that's you kind of can't really call someone that they're going to get offended if you say that, especially after they went and had a household. And that definitely wasn't a joke. Like the way she said it wasn't a joke. She didn't no. expect her to see. She was like, oh, I can't believe that dumb bitch. But, like she was saying that underneath her breath. Like and she Kelsey. said it. She said it. Yeah, to Kelsey, like the yeah. enemy of Levita, and they laughed about it together. Like exactly. And then she was just saying it was a joke to try to cover her ass. That's all it was. Like if it was a joke, it, like you would go up to her and be like, "You dumb bitch! I can't believe you won!" Like that would be a joke. Not, oh, I can't believe that dumb bitch won. Like that's she's that's just backtracking now. Excellent that. point. Yeah, that's one. That's a big thing, right? It's the context in which it's being used, and yeah. when she's talking to Kelsey. 
you know, like laughing about it, then obviously that's a situation. That would be like sort of like on my season, uh, Ginger Ninja, after Kevin won the HOH, uh, the story time HOH in week two, he just went around to everyone and was like, yeah, Johnny, he's going home. He's going home. And he went around saying that to everyone. And then afterwards saying to Johnny, uh, actually, you know what, bro? Like I didn't, I didn't actually mean that, man. Like that was just like a joke. No, like when you're going around to everybody yeah. saying that kind of thing, like, you, you know, it's, it's not really a, it's not really a good idea uh, for your game. Mind you, with Greg, at least Johnny wasn't head of household. Uh, you know, when somebody's HOH and they're five feet from you, you know what it's like, Allison, in that backyard. Everyone, you can hear exactly what people are saying, especially after a competition. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, it's do like you your have hearing the, gets better in there. It's weird. Do you have any distinct memories of people saying things after an HOH win that kind of like led you on to something? Holy crap. Like, that would be a question that you would have asked me two years ago when I got out. <laughs> uh, but now it's gone. It's gone. Now it's completely gone. Uh, completely I don't gone. recall, but perhaps, probably, yes. Okay. I, but then I was again, with... no one ever said anything around me. <laughs> I was the mole. I couldn't adjust it. Uh, I, I was hoping Paul would have said something. We love hearing Paul content on this podcast. So, uh, you know, anytime we can get some more PJ, it's, it's great. Uh, and speaking of PJ... Working on getting him on the show, not to get you guys a little excited, but might happen. It might happen. Paul Jackson might be the greatest guest and the greatest get we've ever gotten on this podcast. I uh, would love to see you and Paul just like <laughs> chat for two hours. Like <laughs> it would be the best. Yeah, it would. It would be. It would be amazing. I, I've never spoken to Paul. Uh, I've had I have a great admiration for Paul. Uh, and hopefully one day it will happen. Uh, and yes, a gizmo kid two one two two in the chat says since Godfrey. That's correct. Godfrey, Godfrey was a pretty great get. Uh, we can't forget about the uh, the lady please who was on the sideshow this week. Allison, did you check mm -hmm. that out? I did. I watched it. It was good. Thoughts on uh, thoughts on the show because we haven't really talked about this on the podcast yet. What are your thoughts on the sideshow format this season with Sarah Hanlon taking over for Gary? Oh, I love it. I love it. I think she's doing great and she looks so good. Lisa is styling perfectly. It's lovely. I'm loving the dresses. Um, I have to say though, I'm missing the rants. I interesting. Loved, I loved their like Peter and Gary's rants. I was hoping that there was going to be like a cutaway to like a pre recorded, you know, rant type segment this week and there wasn't. I don't know yeah, if I love the he said he said she said thing yet. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. It feels it's kind of like they're still trying to find their footing a little bit. I personally mm -hmm. like this week better than the initial week. I kind of like it more just like the talk show format, partially as well because it was more Godfrey time and I just love Godfrey. <laughs> uh, yeah. but interesting show. Taryn, did you check the out the side show? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we know how he feels about it based yeah. on that. Uh, if you want to check out the sideshow, uh, you could. If you go to hamsterwatch.com, I believe there are links there. Uh, if not, if you're struggling, uh, you tweet Taryn or I. We can help you out with that. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, what else do we want to talk about this episode? One person that I really and the main reason why I wanted to bring you on this podcast, Allison, is because you have an insight that nobody else in the community has uh, in terms of Big Brother, and that is. Uh, it, the whole Tim and Nikki thing coming into the house after the game has already started and then getting a week of immunity to kind of buy you a little bit of time. How do you think Tim and Nikki are doing ingratiating, ingratiating themselves into the house based on your experience and what you went through? Okay. So I've been thinking about this since you asked me to come on because <clears throat> Tim and Nikki are doing amazingly. Okay. And there are four reasons why compared to me, they're having an easier time integrating. Now, I'm not saying that if I was in the same boat, I'd be able to integrate as well, because I was all messed up mentally, whatever. So- <laughs> um, It happens, it happens. I, I went in two weeks late. They went yes. in one week late, right? So they went on the first eviction, I went in on the second. So we all know that in Big Brother world, a week of time is like a month. It's like insane, like for, you know, personal relationships and all that. Not being able to have those two weeks was brutal for me. Second, they got like all the house guests got told why they were there. That Canada voted them in and that they were just like everyone else. You know, there was no hidden agenda. They were just another player. I couldn't tell them that. I couldn't tell them I was voted in. I couldn't tell them, you know, you know, I could tell them there's, I'm just a regular player, but they didn't believe me. They had this unknown 
thing, this air about me that nobody could trust. So it made it harder. God, what was the third thing? Oh, shit. Hold on. Right. I made notes. I swear. Oh, you did make notes. Here we go. Just, just for this part, I did. Hold on. I've had wine. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, Allison is pulling up her notes here. Right. Uh, okay. So they do, they do have the excuse of their different format, which helps yes. a little bit. Right. Because they're like, oh, well, we don't know how to play this game. This is all a new learning curve for us. Blah, blah, blah. Which might not be true. Anyway, definitely not true for Tim because he's watched Big Brother Canada. And I really maybe, like maybe, whole... maybe true for Nikki. Maybe true for Nikki. <laughs> maybe true. Maybe true. I think yeah, she's smarter than what she's letting on. I think it's just like the way she plays Big Brother. I really just think that that's just her. And she understands the game. It's just that's her. She's going to cry. She's going to be aloof. Nikki. She's lovely. I love her. Um, but yeah, I really like to know what seasons of big brother canada tim has watched anyway i digress fourth <laughs> oh why 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 allison is there uh is there a little I bit love of a... it. oh we'll talk, we'll talk about that later oh, they, okay the fourth reason they have each other there's two of them there's not just one i was one person there's two of them that's huge they they're gonna have each other's back like i had no one in like after two weeks and everybody being paranoid of me like the fact that i stayed until seventh place is insane in my mind i don't know well that's just me. i i think it's a, i think that's a great <laughs> point i mean you you had your back against the wall from day one because of mm -hmm. the whole twist you really didn't have it you were drawing dead essentially from the start because yeah you're playing two weeks behind which like you said two weeks is really like two months of time in that house uh so a question for you then allison uh if you and nate enter the bb can two house are you guys the new chill town you know it <laughs> <laughs> oh god i've never actually thought about that like if i because yeah who would, you, who would you have rather gone in with would you rather play with nate or would you rather play with scott oh do i have to pick between i mean gotta pick one <laughs> gotta pick one I'm are, they gonna dick. Be, are they gonna be upset because at that time i mean i probably would have picked scott to go in with me if i could have picked one you're gonna get in trouble for big brother wild card edition thinking about if i could win or not or like who I could win against, I'd take Nate. See, I've been watching a lot of Big Brother Australia since Tim went in. So I'm thinking in their strategy now instead of, anyway. Ah, okay, um, interesting. But yeah, I really think that the two wild cards are doing great. Like Tim is killing it and I'm obsessed and I can't even deal how obsessed I am. Like it's shit. It, 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 I, there was a tweet from Alec Beal tonight on Twitter, and he said, uh, how is Tim already better than everyone else at this game? <laughs> Taryn, how, how, is, how is that a thing? How is Tim already the best player in the house? A is he the best player in the house? Uh, it's debatable. I mean, him and Mitch, uh, we can get into that when we go to the live feeds, but um, it's there's some interesting stuff going on there. But I think I think Allison pointed out a lot of uh, good things as far as why the wild cards are, are more successful this time around. Um, in addition to that, I think Tim in particular and Nikki to a lesser extent, um, the success is coming from the fact that um, he, he's also they're very famous. And so these people, they're like, they're vying for these people's attention. They want them to like them because they're talking about how, you know, Nikki wrote a book. She had a TV show. Uh, Tim had people throwing himself, themselves at him after the show. He was on the Celebrity Apprentice Australian edition. Um, they want these guys to like them because they want a little bit of that shine on them. Um, and in addition to that, they're also they're playing a game where they're, uh, they're just, they're kind of pretending they're acting as though they're separate. They're, they're outside of the game that everyone else is playing. Um, you know, you guys have your own machinations and I'll comment on it and I'll give you advice, but I'm not necessarily involved yet. And that's been helping them a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, Tim in particular, that combined with his just, I don't care. I don't even care if I win. I don't even care if I'm here. I want to just be, be here, stir stuff up, um, have some fun and, you know, do whatever. It's, it's what kept Dr. Will alive for so long because people just see like, we know we could get Tim out. We know that maybe he's being, you know, he's lying a little or whatever, but why bother? You know, he's just here for fun. He's not going to necessarily win the game or anything. I think Tim is doing really well with that strategy. We haven't seen it done that well since Dr. Will. I really want to see him do well in the future. 
It's it's going to be fun watching Tim as this game goes uh, into the it moves forward. Uh, it's he's he's just so you can't help but love him. He's got that cult of personality uh, thing about him. It's just you just gravitate towards him. He's electric, uh, and he's even gotten my dad watching Big Brother again, which I never thought would happen after oh, my season. No, but me neither. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's how great that's how great Tim Dormer is. Uh, before we jump into live feeds, guys, is there anything else from this episode in particular that you want to talk about allison uh oh geez we covered the joel date we covered levita oh god what else was there oh <laughs> just uh did we talk about how cute nikki is like her just like in the bathtub like talking about how much she loves lovita i just love lovita you know <laughs> and phil's phil's crush phil's crush on oh, the yeah crush. yes Phil's crush not on Lovita, but Nikki. No. Uh, <laughs> so what do what do we think about this? Is this actually Allison, do you want this to be a thing, Phil and, and Nikki? I would actually really enjoy watching that, I think. I really, really do. Like, I think that would be super cute. Because Wait. she's so like explosive at times, and he's just such a young bro type. It's just it would be like a weird mixture i really think and he's just he even said in the diary room like i don't know she like cries randomly and i still like her like that's <laughs> me i just feel like that would be really funny to watch like i would really like that to happen yeah so please big brother gods make Allison, it happen allison's shipping it taryn are you shipping it <laughs> totally that i mean i think yeah. like that would be way more interesting to watch than you know jared and kelsey who are predestined to be together on the show um i think that would be a really interesting dynamic Phil is is very energetic and <clears throat> like like childlike in his enthusiasm at, at times and Nikki is the same way in a different kind of way like um childlike in her expressions and and the way that she thinks about things and talks about things um so I think it could be a really interesting dynamic to watch and so I really hope that that we get it at some point do we know what the age gap Tim or sorry Phil is 21 Nikki mm -hmm. is 33 yeah, yeah. Okay, so although you know, age age is just a number. It's just a number, right? I mean, you know, sometimes there's people who are you know in their thirties that they have the maturity of people in their twenties. It happens. Yeah. Uh, can we, so there can we, we just talk about one more thing. Yes. Really what quickly. would you like to discuss? Just like the Cassandra Tim flirtation. What do yes. you guys think of that? I'm upset about it. How well, about you well, guys? well obviously, you uh, Allison, well, you're mad. upset. You're mad because because <laughs> you want in on you want in on Tim. Uh, I you want, want you. You, you want Tim. Okay. Yep. So there we go. I'll Allison's throwing it out there. Uh, breaking news uh, on the happy hour. Allison White is, uh, is is gunning for Tim. So here we go. We know uh, Niagara Falls uh, in May. No. Uh, you guys stay tuned for that. Should be fun. <laughs> Stop it. I'm going to be like, hi, Tim. And then he's going to be like, oh, hello. And he's going to like walk off and like just like talk to everyone else. So I'm going to be like there in the corner drinking my wine, like staring at him like a creep. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. It's uh, that's what, <laughs> the story of my life, like in real life. Well, well, uh, what if? Well, Allison, what I have a proposition for you. If uh, if well, I, I was gonna, say, I, I wasn't even gonna say Joel, but yeah, if uh, you know, if it doesn't work out with with Tim. I'm sure Joel will be available. And if Joel is not available, because Joel's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be a hot commodity after oh, this thing. Totally. Uh, okay. what if what if Jace Wiry shows up in Niagara Falls? Would you be interested in that? You know, I have heard uh whispers that he may show up. Um I don't that's how old is he? <laughs> uh I believe like Jace. In, no, no, Jace and the Ginger Ninja, I think, are the same age. So I think oh, okay. 38. 38. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like he has more plastic in his face than I do. Maybe. I don't know. I have no plastic. Can we just Yeah, so, so, yes. Yeah, so there you <laughs> yeah, go. Sounds you like you were saying he had plastic. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. That was not well thought out. Sorry. See? Ah. Um, yeah, no, I never thought about that, Jordan. I don't know. I'm open to anybody. I haven't met any of these people. Maybe they're lovely. You know, I'm open right. to anything. Uh, okay. Well, uh, what about what a last last one before we get into the feeds that I'll bring up? Uh, what about if uh, our our good friend Dallas Bro? What if Dallas Bro ends up being single because his girlfriend is is done with him after this season? Uh, would, would you go on a date with with Dallas, Daddy Dallas? Are, are you saying that because he's the only one from the East Coast on the show <laughs> this year, and I'm over here by myself? Yeah, may, maybe just just a little bit. 
No. <laughs> no? All right. Oh. <laughs> Poor Dallas. No. no, I'm sure he's cool. I'd, I'd love to party with him and stuff, but I just... Mm. Allison is not down for the farting in the jars, unfortunately, I guess. <laughs> you so, know, you <laughs> I love a good joke, but when it's, uh, you know, I don't know. There's something about him that I, I don't know if it's, I don't want to say he's too loud and obnoxious because hello, Andrew. Hi. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> love you, Andrew. He knows. Andrew is actually, and for the record, Andrew is actually, a vi- again, going back he's to phenomenal. how he's you nice. see he's people on the boy. show and when you meet them in real life, Andrew is a very nice guy in real yes. life. And I met him this summer and he was like, just the kindest guy. So, uh, yeah. you know, the house makes people go nuts. So totally, totally. And like the, and I, you know, I don't want to talk about edit too much, but yeah, you get edited a certain way. Like if you just so happen to be loud and obnoxious, you know, half of the day, those, that's the half they're going to use probably. Yeah. There's only but so much show feet, they can show. So, exactly. Uh, right. Uh, quickly before we get into the live feeds update, uh, from the chat, uh, from at Calentar Netta, not, not actually oh. Netta Calentar, but oh. someone else <laughs> and, and, uh, at noobs allowed, they say Jace is 39 years old. So we were off oh, okay. by a year. So there we go. So fact checking there, Jace is 39, Allison. So yeah, maybe 12 you years know. older than I am. Okay, there we go. And he is, let's see, 17 years older than I am. So good times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Let's jump into the live feed. So if you are watching this and you do not want to know who won the power of veto, what's going on, who's going home, all that kind of stuff, now's your time to check out. Before you check out, though, don't forget to join us again Wednesday, live after the episode. I'll be talking to Bruno Aiello to break down uh, the veto competition, uh, all the aftermath of that kind of stuff. Maybe, you know, I'm sure we'll see more of Joel. Lots of great things. Don't forget to check that out. Go to robiswebsite.com slash happy hour. That's happy hour with an R at the front. Or you can give me a follow on Twitter. I'm at Jordan Parhar, and we will see you then. Okay, Taryn, let's talk about the live feeds. Who, who won the power of veto? Dallas won the power of veto. <laughs> oh, there he is, Dallas. He may not be getting dates with Allison White, but he is winning <coughs> POVs. So Dallas is your POV winner. And from what I read, uh, apparently Dallas thought that if you win the POV, you can also like choose who's nominated. Is that did I did I read that right? He didn't he didn't think that, um, but it, like he acted like that was how it worked, though. And and a lot of people, you know, Levita at one point was saying, like, you know, if Dallas uses it and he puts you up, then what, what can I do? Um, like there's, there's a lot of like confusion around the talk about that. But uh, basically, Dallas, Dallas was not happy with the nominations. He wanted uh, Levita to go after Kelsey, Raul, Jared. Um, when it didn't happen, he decided, OK, I hate the brothers. Why don't I just try to get the brothers backdoored? Because I think that Levita made a, a deal with Third Wheel. Um, so, I mean, and to be fair, the brothers are after him to some extent, but most people were after him at that point. He just doesn't realize it yet. Um, so he thinks, I'm going to win the veto. I'm going to take down probably Christine, um, maybe Cassandra, and then I'm going to I'm going to get Levita to put up the brothers, and we'll backdoor the brothers. He was so excited about this plan. Him and Maddie were like super giddy about it. Ramsey was like, "What? Why would you do that?" Um, and <laughs> Dallas won the veto, and he was like, "Yes, I did it! I did it! The brothers are going to be backdoored." And then he went and talked to Levita, and she was like, "No, I'm not. Gonna, I'm yeah. not going to do that. Why would I do that?" <laughs> oh oh no. Oh, Dallas. Okay, so now uh, what? what's the situation then? Is Dallas still going to use the veto and he's just going to force Levita to do something or is he going to leave him the same? Dallas and Levita had a, a, a long talk um, where he said he wanted to backdoor the brothers. Levita said, no, I want Cassandra out. Cassandra's my target. I think that she is the person I want out for sure. Nothing you say is going to change that. Um, and she's like, this isn't even good for your game. Don't, don't, antagonize the brothers i'm gonna call them up here right now and we're gonna tell them that you wanted to backdoor them and we're gonna cut a deal with them where you say i'm not gonna do it so let's work together that's how you play the game (laughs) that's how it works um (laughs) was this today that was last night Oh, oh my god. I was gosh. working last night. That's why I don't know any of this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was I was out last night, so I missed that as well. Okay. So so basically this is like uh this is I guess 
like Paul Jackson giving advice on how to play Big Brother to Devin Shepard, basically, Taryn? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. She was making a lot of sense at first. Like, this is how her mind works. We're like, uh, we can go into this later, but I actually agree to some extent with the nomination she made. I don't think she should have gone after third, third wheel, but the way she went about it was utter nonsense. And that's just like Levita in a nutshell, where she was explaining correctly to Dallas, like, this isn't a good move. You shouldn't be trying to do this. You should try to be working with the brothers. And then she goes like off the rails and says, let's call them up here and we'll talk about what we just talked about and try to make a deal that way. Um, and now, so now the brothers think Levita is insane. They, they, they want her on the block, even though they're, they're not sure they're going to target her next because they're not sure she's worth their time, but they're definitely like even more gun gung ho on, on Dallas now because of what he, what that, whole situation was about so i mean that was that was a whole mess um and so okay so walk so walk me through this terrence so the the brothers actually so did levita summon the brothers to the hoh room with dallas and they did all talk about the situation as a group yeah we we, unfortunately they cut the feeds like and we missed Uh, a good chunk of it we caught the, the tail end of it where um they were they we they were cordial about it and they were like okay this is good like we'll work together in the future um but we've seen kind of the fallout from it where nobody feels comfortable about that except for levita to some extent (laughs) oh my gosh okay so as of right now dallas has the veto veto ceremony i think is tonight is it not it should be um it is yeah beats haven't cut yet though so i mean we don't know what's going on with it maybe tomorrow morning okay Yeah. yeah, so we think that Dallas is not going to use the veto then. Right now, um, there's been a, this. This is this is like shades of Big Brother 17, the early weeks, and and what's been going on this week. Um, we also have a lot with Mitch and Joel, where uh, immediately after mm-hmm. Levita wins the HOH, she goes to Mitch and Joel. She says, "I trust you guys the most." Um, and these guys, they're two guys that are playing the middle. They tried to get her to target third wheel because they want her to get the blood on her hands. They can be have their hands clean. Mitch, in particular, was doing work with Jared, preparing him for Kelsey to leave so that Mitch could pick him up, pick Raul up, and secretly have them on the side. Unfortunately, he can't get love to make this move uh, because the more that he tries to convince her to do it, the more she doesn't want to do it because she wants to do something that only she wants to do. Um, so... <laughs> That that Jeez. goes on. Um, another interesting thing is that Mitch uh, kind of caught on to t- what Tim is doing. Tim at one point was like, "Yeah, put up Cassandra. I don't care. Let's send her home. I don't. I don't even like her anymore. She annoys me." Um, and then afterward, he was like, "Can you believe Levita put Cassandra on the block?" And Mitch caught that. He told Levita. Levita was super sketched out by Tim. Uh, she had a conversation with him saying, "Like, I don't know if I can trust you. You're really shady." Tim completely smoothed it over, um, got Levita back on her on his side. He's talking about wanting uh, a middle person's alliance. Uh, he calls them the stones because the waves they crash back and forth. The the, the rocks they stay put. They're not floaters. They're rocks. Um, what is with him with rocks? <laughs> he, he really likes rocks. rocks. He, he loves, loves rocks. Them. So he wants this alliance to be. <laughs> Or at least what he told Levita was he wants the the alliance to be Mitch, uh, Joel, him, Nikki, and Levita, uh, and then also the brothers. But let's not tell them. But he doesn't actually want to work with Levita. She's too crazy. So he actually wants the brothers in and not Levita, um, which would be an amazing alliance if it worked out. Um, and what is interesting is that Mitch is on to Tim. Tim doesn't quite know yet that Mitch is on to him to, to that extent. But um, I think we're going to see kind of like a cold war between the two where. <laughs> they're, they're recognizing that they're both really good and they're going to be taking really subtle swipes at each other, trying to undermine each other's credibility throughout the game. And I think it's going to be really interesting to watch if they're able to to stick together. Yeah, like there are two of my favorites. Like Mitch is my pick to win, like from the actual Canadians. Yeah. And then Tim, obviously. So I don't want them to be against each other. I know, right? Well, hopefully, because... because. Tim keeps talking about like I haven't talked to Mitch yet. I really need to talk to Mitch. He really ne- he really needs to talk to Mitch. Like he should have yeah. already done it before Mitch had kind of caught on to him. Um, but hopefully he talks to Mitch soon and they they really get this together. Um, Tim and and Joel and Mitch they all kind of want the brothers in the game as the kind of the face of the middle ground people so that they will go first. And that seems like what's going to happen. A lot of people are targeting the brothers. A uh, decent amount of people are targeting Dallas still. Um, and magically, Levita is kind of safe in all this. Um, she, she, you know, Kelsey still doesn't like her, but Jared 
Jared is is legitimately like, you know what? I had some good talks with Levita. I like I don't think we need to go after her next week. Um I think that barring uh, an unlucky HOH win, Levita could be safe next week and then all she needs to do is just stay away from winning competitions for a while and I think she'll be, she'll be dragged yeah. along just because of all the shenanigans she did. People are going to be like, I mean it's it's going to be like Sabrina where you know, she was crazy, and now people are like, yeah, she's crazy. We're just going to, like, let her <laughs> yeah, sit Yeah, she's crazy. Just let her sit in the corner. <laughs> exactly. Kind of deal. Yeah. yeah. Allison, should this be the new strategy in Big Brother to just be – get HOH twice really early on and then just screw them both up so royally that everyone just thinks you're <laughs> terrible at the game and you can't win? If you manage to stay, Jesus, how did that happen? I don't. I still don't know. I wish I, – I honestly wish that Sherry, Sherry stayed. She was in my pool. I lost a lot of points. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I had her in a few pools as well. Shari, I felt like had the had what it took to really go far in the game, but mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about Levita, but I just re- like you know I, I have kind of ripped on her a little bit and in, in stuff tonight, but I just I do she's fun to watch. She I can't she, help but watch her. I don't know. Ma- a paranoid train wreck. <laughs> yeah. Like. Honest to God, like she's just so serious all the time. Then she makes a joke, but it's like, ha ha, someone laughed at my joke. Ha-ha. And like, she just looks so uncomfortable all the time. It's so awkward. But she's like, I love her, but I wanted, I wanted her to leave. But I'm kind of glad she stayed because she's like, this week on feeds has just been like, what? She, so. she's like, she's everything you would want to see in in a player when you're looking for entertainment because she's yeah. thinking so strategically that she's going in circles and yeah. her social game is just a mess. And so things are going on all over the place. Uh, Mitch and Joel are going to make another push to try and get her to backdoor Kelsey, or at least they were talking about it. They're not sure if they should push again because she seems really resistant. I don't think she's going to do it. I think uh, she's probably going to try and keep the nominations the same and she's going to try and get Cassandra out. But does she have the votes? It's unclear at this point. <laughs> she, we may see another scenario where her pawn goes home. I just like wish this girl would stop, stop with the girls. Like what's happening? She hates (laughs) girls. Literally her whole, well, I guess she had Raul on the short list this week, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one guy (laughs) out of eight. (laughs) Okay. Let's think uh, hypothetically. Okay. uh, Let's say Dallas just goes rogue because we've seen that happen before. Uh, What, what is Levita doing? Because, right, it could happen. I mean, there's still a lot of time, right? It's, you know, it's 9, 12 Eastern time. These guys usually stay up pretty late. And if the veto ceremony is tomorrow, you never know what's happening. And maybe that's why they've kind of pushed off holding the veto uh, ceremony because they want to wait and see, okay, well, maybe something can happen. Taryn, what do you think Levita would do? Let's say, I don't know, let's say Dallas wins and he takes Christine off the block. Who's going up? Um, It's, it's not super clear. Uh, I think... She would probably put up Maddie if Dallas used it going rogue just to like, you know, Dallas, if you're going to use it, I'm going to put up your ally. Um, I did see recently like Nikki suggested Mitch or Joel and she was like, um, I think I'd need to talk to them first. Um, and I'm seeing right now that that Dallas is trying to pitch to Levita now. Let's backdoor Jared. So I again, I'm that's probably not going to happen. Um, I I really I don't think Dallas will use it. I think he'll be scared that Maddie will go up, and I think that if he does use it against Levita's wishes, Maddie is probably going to go up. Oh man, well I. Oh. This is I just love this game so much. I mean, this is just there's so many things happening. It's so great. And you know, it's it, I, I'm real I just I'm so excited. This is gonna be great. I hope I hope he uses it. I really do. Probably not, too. but <laughs> even even if not, we'll we'll see what happens. One thing I want to ask you about as well, Taryn, is uh Christine. We saw Christine had pretty much like the worst possible attitude you can have after being nominated this week after this the nominations she calls Levita a bitch in the diary room she's like well i saw that coming uh and you know which is like well you know what you, you kind of were rude to Levita last week when you won the pov so i don't know you should kind of be able to take it when she wins hoh but alas uh how has she been handling things on the feeds since the nomination ceremony and since not winning the power veto competition. Uh, I think she, her way of handling it has been to avoid the feeds and avoid doing anything at all because she, she's just been invisible. She hasn't done anything. I've barely seen her talk to anybody. Um, she's, 
she I don't think she's had a single conversation of like legitimate strategy for how to save herself yet. Uh, I think she's kind of relying on I'm just going to play possum and hope that the votes don't fall my way. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that's I mean that's basically what she's doing she and then get really angry when bad things happen that she doesn't like yeah I find her really like arrogant in a way like interesting she's well, just, it's like, sort of... she sits around all you know she cleans and eavesdrops or whatever she does and but then she'll like go in the room for half the day and lie in bed and just complain usually I don't know and then like then she says oh you know <clears throat> She's, she thinks she's a great player or something. She said one day, I don't know. I can't even, I don't, I can't in, in even. Fairness, in fairness, to, in fairness to Christine, I'm pretty sure everybody in the big brother house at some point, at least they probably don't say it, but I think they all, everyone thinks, man, I'm a really good I'm player. Such a I'm a good so, player. Yeah. I'm a, such a good player. Guys, I'm so good at this game that I'm going to volunteer to go on the block. <laughs> And throw the power veto competition, and no one's gonna vote me out. I'm that totally. good. Everybody totally. thinks it at some point. So, in 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 her defense, <laughs> uh, I will give her that. Uh, yeah. But that's fair. Yeah, yeah. It, I know. Interesting, right? Like she's almost. I mean, a lot of people preseason were like, "Oh, she's kind of like Sarah Miller. She's kind of like Mumsy." But oh, Allison, it seems no. like they're the complete opposite, right? Okay, so I think that's what a lot of people were hoping because she seems cool, like a like a yeah. cool older woman, which. Might have just say Sarah's not an older woman. No, she's it's a young that's woman. She's and, not. But she's just like she was older in our cast, is all. Um, yeah. And so quick interjection. Were, quick interjection. Yeah. Sarah, I think Sarah was thirty-two when she played, whereas like everybody yeah. seems to think like Sarah was in her forties. Sarah is like a very young mom. So anyway, yeah, continue, exactly. Allison. Um, yeah. So I think that's what people were hoping for her because like Sarah is very well liked. She was a great player. She just got, she, she left too soon. You know, she was, she was a really well liked player. And I think that a lot of people were hoping that this Christine woman is going to be like her. Cause she seems really upbeat, really cool. You know, uh, I don't know. She just came off that way. And <clears throat> I really don't see that coolness at all like she's just there like a like a bed slug half a day and you know i i'm sure she's lovely whatever but she just i think she's just annoyed with all the younger kids maybe and like things aren't going her way but like she's not really doing much to make things go her way she's just oh i'm not really playing game i'm not really in any alliances i'm not blah 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 it's just you're not she's not like sarah at all sarah was like half strategic, like in all of her thinking. So, you know, it's just, and stop calling her mumsy. All of them are trying, like Dallas was trying to call Christine. And like, I'm upset about this. And <laughs> Dallas was trying yes, to call Christine mumsy. Like get your act together. He was saying, apparently he has watched the show. If you watched our season, that's just disrespectful, sir. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is. There is only one mumsy. Okay. And, and yet another reason. Say. Yet another reason why Dallas won't be getting a date with Allison after this season. There will hashtag Dallison wow. will no longer will never be a thing. Ruined uh, his chances. Ruined his chances. If if only he didn't do that, it could, it could have been different. Let's talk about something else from the feeds that I alluded to earlier uh, that happened today. A really touching moment. Uh, Joel actually. So he, Allison, do you want to talk about this? Because I feel like you enjoyed this just as much as I did. I, it kind of came out of nowhere because I saw so. Tim was making like this slop cake and I was like, Oh, is it Tim's birthday or uh, in Joel's birthday? I didn't understand what was really going on. And he like made this little cake with a candle and everything. And like before uh, this movie that the veto people won or whatever, uh, they all gathered in the living room. And, you know, I was thinking it was Joel's birthday or something. And Joel starts talking about his old, I think it was older brother. Yeah. who passed away and that today would have been his birthday and i like you know he got he told everybody about him how he's an, he was an artist and how you know he he was always you know envious of his brother because he was cooler than joel was and stuff but he loved him and everything and and that he passed away and he was a really good artist and everything and asked everyone to kind of sing happy birthday for him with him and then have a moment of silence and seriously that was the best cry I've had in a while because that was probably the sweetest thing I've seen from somebody. And like everyone was so accepting and supportive to him during the whole thing. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. 
Yeah, and, really, really beautiful. Just a real moment that yeah. you, you know we we do get those from time to time. My big brother, and you know we did get. You know, last week people were saying, oh, well, you know, Raul and, and Ramsey do the prayer thing. Like, that's really cool. But, you know, we have kind of seen that before uh, on, on your season, Allison. And that was, don't, uh, don't get me wrong, that was a great moment. But seeing this moment for me, and I think for a lot of people, it was unique mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, really heartwarming. And it goes to show that when you're in that house and you're playing that game, no matter how much you might dislike a certain person or for whatever reason, at the end, ultimately when you're in there everybody's got each other's backs you've got unless it's season two i mean season two is a little <laughs> crazy but but uh, but for pretty much every other season i mean you know there's we you all have that com camaraderie and it was a really great moment taryn we're, we're assuming this is probably going to make the show and based on what we've seen out of joel he's getting a really a really strong edit so far just in terms of you know, positivity. Do you think that Joel could become Canada's favorite next to Tim? Uh, it seems like that's that's where they're headed. Um, I I think they're they're also putting a lot of chips in the Jared uh you know pool uh with with the edit he got. But I think Joel is kind of the star at the moment. Um, Tim mm -hmm. is going to be you know the feisty kind of fun Australian. Jared's going to be the the heroic you know. Superman and Joel is going to be like you know the nerdy sweetheart that everybody loves and I think um, so far he's been getting a lot of airtime and I think he's going to get some more in the coming episodes um, so yeah I think I think he could easily be one of the the more popular people here Oh. I love, yeah. I mean, this he's amazing. I love that guy yeah, so know, much. I, how can you not love Joel? And I, you know, he's just he's just a great dude. So I'm I'm really happy for him. It seems like he's having the time of his life in there. So uh, let's see let's see how far Joel can go with this thing. And hopefully, this uh, what we the Stones Alliance can actually become a thing because that would be pretty sweet. Uh, Quickly before we wind things down, uh, and oh, I've completely lost track of the time. I haven't even taken any questions yet. So before we get into the questions, uh, quickly, Taryn, uh, what is the – right now, if the veto is not used, we have Cassandra on the block, we have Christine on the block. <laughs> what is it looking like? Is What's going to happen here? What, where, where are people uh, thinking? What do they think about this? Part of me wishes I could tell you. But part of me is glad that I can't because it's still very much up in the air. Uh, yeah. Kelsey was just talking with Jared and Raul about what do we do if the noms stay the same? Um, I don't really trust Cassandra anymore. Uh, do we just take her out and, and you know, keep Levita kind of happy? Uh, even though I don't care about keeping Levita happy, like I don't really trust Cassandra anymore because there was some beef between them after the whole thing, you know. Levita told her, Cassandra told me that it was fine to put you up as a replacement instead of you and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of sketchiness going on there. Uh, and then obviously it also just uh, depends on uh, what Dallas and Maddie and um, Jer uh, Ramsey decide to do. And then also, I think, again, what's going to decide it is uh, what Mitch and Joel and Tim decide to do. Where do they want to go? At the moment, Joel especially wants to keep Cassandra because he feels close to her. And um, he he thinks it's in his best interest to have her in the game. But if he sees the the tide turning the other way, he may feel like, well, maybe I don't want to make Levita upset here because I do think it's, and this is part of the reason why they want to get the noms changed. They really, they're kind of picking a side with this vote where if they don't vote Cassandra off, then Levita knows for sure, like you just totally screwed me. But if they vote Cassandra off, then it's, that's a potential ally gone. Um, I personally think for Joel's game, he should drop Cassandra. I, she's not very loyal to him, uh, even though I think he thinks she is. And I think that it works It works for him, especially if Tim is okay with it and the rest of the house is okay with it. Just go with the flow, let Cassandra go, um, and, and move on from there. But it, again, it's still very much in the air. Um, the third wheel, they like to change their mind all the time. Uh, the veto hasn't even been played yet. Who knows what the veto will want? <laughs> after the veto is played, you know, like so many things could happen. It could easily go either way. Allison, if you are in this, if you're in the middle and you got to pick a side, if you're in Joel's shoes right now, what would you do? Would you get rid of Cassandra or would you go after Christine? I think it's easy for Joel to kind of say he's going to vote at Christine. Like, like Taryn said, he's closer to Cassandra. You know, he's not close with Christine at all. 
And it's easy to play with your emotions in there. It, like, even though you want to say, you know, use this, use your smarts, do the smart thing, you don't always do that. You get blindsided by emotions or, you know, feeling comfortable or what have you. And <laughs> I, I don't think that he will go against Cassandra. But I do agree that it would be a good idea because she's got her hands in everybody's honeypot. And she's dangerous that way, I think, to be honest. If she stays, I think that she's, you know, if she stays, I think she's going to pull back a bit and maybe not do that as much. And then she's going to keep going. Because yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, do you agree with that? I, yeah. think that's, I think that's really astute because I think that so far she's been, she was doing really well, but she was, she was too aggressive and she was in too many pots. And I think yeah. that if she is able to use this opportunity to learn uh, like learn from her mistakes and uh, you know adapt from that. I think that she could be a very dangerous player moving forward. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think if she stays, she's one to watch out for. Yeah, like I actually really like her a lot. Uh, like um, <laughs> I think it was funny that you kept going with my pot analogy. I was thinking that she was getting too <laughs> sticky and she just needs a shower <laughs> and then just kind of start over and do a little dab. But yeah, no, I think she's dangerous. I really do. So I think it would be smarter for them to get rid of her now kind of nip that uh in the bud there well uh, selfishly i made a bet with uh with rob uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. that uh that, that she's gonna make it to the jury so i'm really <gasps> hoping crossing my fingers that she can pull this one out this week and you and you said uh a little dab uh like like a little dab like that is that, is that what we're gonna get for me if uh if uh cassandra stays this week perhaps perhaps we'll, we'll get some we'll get some of those on my twitter uh if cassandra is the one who is staying this week uh, but i don't I know just say i really don't want her to make it to jury because you know the tim will and then we'll be in jury <laughs> together oh god <laughs> okay <gonna> <laughs> You know what, guys, we don't have time for questions, but let's two quick things I, I would like to ask you, Allison. First, uh, let's get your winner pick. Who's going to win this season? Oh, it's so hard, though, with the with the internationals in there. Um, out of the core group, like I said, Mitch is my pick to win. I think he's so smart. He's playing the best game right now. Like, he reminds me, dare I say it, of Neda a bit. And he wears black and saint. Imagine. Um, he does. <laughs> but... Ah oh, man, like I love that kid. I love him. I have high hopes for him. Um, but man, Tim or Nikki, you know, like Nikki is like shoe in for final two, dude. Like, <laughs> right? Like we haven't really seen her in comps yet, but I don't know. I think she's shoe in for final two. But Tim is such a manipulator. You never know like what he's gonna do. The way he smoothed over that talk with Levita when she was. Um, Doubting him is really, really impressive. And he's adapted so well to the game already. So I like, I don't know. I can't, I can't pick. Those are the three that are like up there. All right. Those are the three. And then <laughs> last question, Allison, before we uh, wrap things up for this evening, what would you like your showman's name to be with Tim? <gasps> I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would, it, would it be uh, Tim Allison? Would that work? No, it's Timison. Timison? Timison. Or or uh Al Al Alim? No, that wouldn't really work. No. Uh Talison's not. My name, my name is so hard to do that with. I'm always in the end. Like you can never start with my name. <laughs> yeah. No. It's awful. Aim. No, you can Yeah, aim. Aim. <laughs> aim. aim. I kinda like aim. I, I do, I do, yes. Let's do that. That's aim. Great. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna Hashtag go with aim. aim. Hashtag aim. And <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps things up for uh, this uh, this night's uh, episode of the Reality TV We're Happy Hour. As I mentioned earlier on tonight, you can subscribe to the podcast. Go to robiswebsite.com slash rehap up so you get all the podcasts from Reality TV Rehap up. So that's my show, The Bachelor Rehap up, which has a very big episode coming up tomorrow night, the finale of The Bachelor. Uh, Allison, you watching The Bachelor this season? No. <laughs> oh, right. I usually do with my mom, but I haven't been watching. I heard Allison it's is not, really it, riveting. It's it is it's always very riveting. So so yeah. Jeff, definitely subscribe. You get that podcast and lots of other great stuff. Uh, and check us out on YouTube as well. Just check out the Reality TV Rehap Ups page on YouTube, so you can check out Allison's hat. You can see Taryn's sweater and the little thing he did at the start of this podcast, where he pretended to hide uh, when really <laughs> he he was just sitting on his couch the entire time. It was very great. Uh, so check that out as well. Uh, and reminder to all you guys, leave a review and a rating for the podcast on iTunes. So you can do that by going to robinsonwebsite.com slash rehappyhour.
hour. And then from there, uh, just leave a star rating and a review. And for three people that leave reviews at the end of the season, you're going to be getting a Jordan Parhar related prize. So uh, <laughs> not revealing what it is just yet, but it is something uh, worth playing for. Or maybe it isn't. We'll find out once I reveal what it actually is. Uh, I so- want it. Well, leave a rating and review, Allison, and you can get it. Is it, it the so. red, red apple undies? Uh, maybe, oh. maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. So uh, <laughs> definitely go do that if you haven't already. Um, and if you win, maybe you can donate the prize to Allison White if you're, you know, if you're feeling generous. Uh, so don't forget to do that as well. And join us on Wednesday. I'll be back with Bruno Aiello from Big Brother Canada 3. We'll be talking about the veto, what actually is happening, who's going home. Alex Kidwell will be with us that night as well. So he will be telling us all about who's going home, the live feeds, all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, we need a hashtag for this evening, guys, for people to tweet us after the show to let us know what they thought about the episode. I think naturally we got to go with hashtag aim because that's the show (laughs) we came up with. Uh, The other hashtag that I would like to use is uh, hashtag evil dick was not on season eight. So that's like a very... (laughs) Very long, very, very long hashtag. hashtag. But if you can, it's it's the, an optional hashtag. So if you want to fit that in, uh, you get you get bonus points for me because uh, I still can't believe that Sabrina Such thought a that painful moment. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. so great. Uh, or uh, you could also use hashtag Brandon. That works as well. Brandon uh, yeah. with an A. Brandon yeah. with an A, not not Brandon Villegas. Uh, How's Brandon? Brandon. Yes. How is Brandon doing? Okay. <laughs> Why are you uh, talking in your Paul voice when you uh, say that? Sabrina and Paul are different people. You can too. All the, the all the impressions just jumble into one, and that's that's just yes. kind of how it works for me. It's all Paul. All Paul, baby. It's all Paul. I just Paul. can't get Paul out of my head. He's just so amazing. Okay, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. For Allison White and Taryn Armstrong, I'm Jordan Parhar. Hashtag aim. Hashtag evil dick was not on season eight. And hashtag Brandon. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Peace out.